Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's topic is going to be malaria. Malaria is a very common disease, especially in tropical or subtropical countries. A parasite called plasmodium is responsible for causing malaria. There are different types of plasmodium, but the most common ones are plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium vivax, plasmodium oval, plasmodium nolesi, and plasmodium malaria. Plasmodium gains access to the bloodstream through a mosquito bite. But how does the mosquito get it in the first place? When the female Anopheles mosquito feeds on the blood of a malaria patient, she picks up plasmodium in a state called gametocytes. These grow within her system and become sporozoids. When she feeds on a different person, these sporozoids leave her body through her saliva and enter the bloodstream of the healthy person. These sporozoids immediately migrate to the liver where they mature and become merozoids. They can become dormant for up to a year here. When these merozoids are mature enough, they can come out from the liver into the bloodstream and enter the red blood cells of the person and either form new merozoids or form new gametocytes that can be picked up by another female Anopheles mosquito and the cycle continues. Symptoms start to manifest at the time the merozoids enter the bloodstream. These symptoms are fever, chills and headache, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, muscle and joint pain, cold sweats, rapid breathing, rapid heart rate, fatigue and cough. These symptoms are known to fluctuate in intensity, meaning they reach a high level at once and then come down immediately and then spike again. This is called malaria attacks. Apart from a mosquito bite, malaria could also be gotten from blood transfusion, infected needles or blades, or infected pregnant women can infect their babies through the placenta. Malaria should not be taken lightly as it is known to cause complications such as cerebral malaria. Here, the parasite blocks tiny blood vessels to the brain and this can lead to inflammation of the brain, seizures, stroke or coma. It can also lead to anemia, kidney or liver failure. Diagnosis is made in the hospital after plasmodium has been identified in the patient's blood tests. Treatment of malaria is based on the type of plasmodium seen, the intensity of the disease, and the age of the patients. A pregnancy test should always be done for female patients. Residents of a malaria region may be exposed to the disease enough to acquire partial immunity, which can lessen the severity of malaria symptoms. However, this partial immunity can disappear if you move to a place where you are no longer frequently exposed to the parasite. We have reached the end of this video. If this video has been helpful in any way, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video. Say Anjama.